بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت السميع العليم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Last week we went through the whole process of غزوة بني المصطلق and all the aftershocks that happened during this, one of them was Abdullah ibn Ubaid Salul saying, And Allah has proven that the Prophet is the high honorable person. And remember that there was Sahabi radiallahu anhu, Zayd ibn al-Arqam, who heard it and passed the message of the Prophet when Allah revealed the Quran, the verses about it, the Prophet ﷺ went and held the ear of Zayd. And he said, this is the ear that Allah has fulfilled and proven to be truthful. Because Munafiqin, of course, they'll say, no, we didn't say it. He's lying. Allah has fulfilled his, that he is honest and he's saying the truth. And then we went through the fitna of Al-Ifq, the slander of Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha and Allah proving the, her innocence. And we said that at the end of that whole, all this, three people were lashed about it. I might have said four, but there are three. Mustah ibn Abi Mustah, Hamna bin Tujahsh, who is the sister of Sayyidah Zainab bin Tujahsh, Umm al-Mu'mineen, and possibly out of you know, her heart and you know, blood relation to her sister. And the third was Hassan bin Thabit, the uh, poet of the Prophet ﷺ. These three were lashed because they openly spoke about the adultery. The others were just hinting everybody else, but these three were spoken about openly, so they were lashed. Today we'll progress, inshallah, to another event, because after this the hardship that the Prophet ﷺ has happened, he had a dream, and he told his Sahaba that, I have a dream that we will be going, inshallah, for Umrah, we will slaughter Hadi and we will shave our heads. So he announced openly that he is deciding to go for Umrah. And it was in Dhul Qa'dah in the sixth year of Hijrah, after Hijrah. So everybody started getting ready. Of course, Al Ansar and Muhajireen were interested. They got all ready and they wanted to go. And some of the Arabians from surrounding Arabia went with them. And out of Munafiqeen, only one decided to join them. And that person was well known to them. His name was Al Jid ibn Qais. And he had a camel that was more of a reddish brown red color. So he had a very specific camel. Which would, we say that because it would come to a, a reason for it. Out of all this, the number that collected with the Prophet were 1,400 men. So 1400 going to Umrah. And the Prophet ﷺ led Al Hadi, which is the cattle for slaughter himself. And there were 70 camels. So if you count, calculate it, it's a camel per 20 person, per people. That's what the Hadi, or what we say, the, when they want to slaughter for, uh, you know, uh, as we say, the Al Udhiyah, which is Hadi for Hijaj, Udhiyah for the Nuhaji. They got, got out of Medina, seven miles from Medina, they got to Abar Ali, or what's called Abiyar Ali, or as well, the same, the name is Dhul Hulayfa. That is the place where they do Ihram, the people of Medina. And if we, if people who has been there, may Allah, you know, help us all to get there. Abiyar Ali, to do the Ihram there is 450 miles from Mecca. So they have to be on Ihram all that journey. Compared to people who come from Jeddah, the, the place Miqat for Ihram is closer to Mecca. So what we have there, it's like subhanAllah, a circle which is Kaaba and Al-Haram, which is Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Around that few miles surrounding this is a Bayt Al-Haram as a whole, Mecca, Al-Haram. Anything that whoever crosses that territory you are in Al-Haram. You're not supposed to hurt anybody, or harm anyone, kill anything. This is Al-Haram. And around that is Al-Mawaqeet, Al-Miqat, where you have to do the Ihram. And this circle is different in distance between place to place. 
and people who have been to Mecca that now have high signs to say you are entering Al Haram to show you that this outside this is Haram in is out and is, is Haram itself. So just to for people to know about it. And we know that Mina and Arafah and Muzdalifa are outside Al Haram, not within. So the Prophet وسلم, did the Ihram with all the Sahaba and went across and started their journey. Quraysh heard, we are not allowing them to come. Of course, the Prophet وسلم, had to take weapons, keep them on the cattle, not holding on them, just with them, in case there is anybody to attack them as defense. Quraysh made an oath that they will not allow Muhammad or the Muslims to come for Umrah without their permission. And they got an army and got it on the way at the entrance of Mecca, were coming from Medina. And that was led by Khalid ibn al-Walid and Abu Sufyan stayed inside Mecca, not with the troops. Because Abu Sufyan was the leader at that stage, of course. So Muhammad وسلم, heard he had a, someone coming to him called Bishr ibn Sufyan al kabi He warned him that the mushrikeen in Quraysh are preparing they will not allow him to enter without a fight. The Prophet ﷺ had ihram, he's not going for a fight. So he called his Sahaba and said, is there one of you who knows a way, a route to get to Al-Haram? Or oh, another different way, so Quraysh does not know about it. One of the Sahaba, yes, I know, but it's a little bit of a rough road. It's not easy for a group, you know, 1400 people to go through. Prophet ﷺ said, even though, let's go do, do that way. So if you want to enter without a fight, we're coming in peace, we want to do Umrah. So they went there, managed to get all around Quraysh, Quraysh not knowing what's happening. And they got to the place close to the Haram. SubhanAllah, the old Muslims were so happy now about to get into the Haram. And as soon as they reached a few steps beforehand, the camel of the Prophet ﷺ kneeled down. They tried to hit it, to pull it, to push it, it would not move. So Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, it must have something has happened to her. Is it jinn or whatever happening to your camel? He said, no. She has been locked up by the one who locked up the elephant. Remember the beginning of the story, the elephant of Abraha coming to destroy Kaaba. Who stopped him? Allah. She has been blocked and locked by Allah. Allah doesn't want us to proceed into the Haram. He said, Ya Rasulullah, we're outside the Haram. We need just to get in to, be, to feel safe. He said, Allah has ordered this to stay, so we'll camp here. So they camped outside the Haram. Message got to Quraysh, Muslims are arriving. They just ran away with all their power, got there and found that the Muslims have camped outside the Haram. What a surprise, you know, if they wanted to come in, they could have been inside and safe. So what are they planning? Why did they not get into the Haram? Do they want to fight? But again, they have their wearing the Ihram. So they're coming for Umrah. And they look at it, they have weapons with them. So they must be coming for a fight. Another thing, if, but they have the cattle and the cattle for Hadi, it's not Allah, no one is allowed to ride and no one is allowed to hurt, and they usually have like a little cut on them or they put some special special thing on them so they're known as a mark, that these are for the slaughter. So when Quraysh saw them, these are animals for slaughter, so they must be coming for Umrah. And the debate started amongst Quraysh themselves. The Sahaba came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, we camped in a place with no water. We need somewhere, a well, where we can get, get water and drink. He said, anybody knows that there is a well in here or an old well? The Sahaba said, yes, there was an old well just nearby. So they took the Prophet ﷺ there, there and said, okay, get me all the water you have. They gathered the water they got and he made wudu over this well. So his water was dripping in the well. And he did his wudu and asked one Sahaba to say, go all the way down with an arrow and scratch the ground. And subhanAllah, Sahabi did that and water filled up that well. And they filled up everything they want, they drank, and there was well water coming content, constantly for them. So they had a well from Nama from Allah. Now, of course, the people of Mecca could not understand what's happening. 
So they decided to send some people to negotiate with him. But they didn't want anyone from Quraysh. But, you know, Mecca is, everybody comes there for Umrah, and the leaders of other tribes come for visits. So they try and find out any of the leaders to try and, and talk to them. So first of all, they, they said, they got someone who called Budayl ibn Warqa. He's one of the leaders of Khuza'a, one of the tribes. And he said, go and talk to Muhammad, see what, what, what is he up to. So Budayl, as a leader, an Arabian who's known as an honorable person, went there and started talking to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, what do you want to do? He said, we're here for Umrah. He said, so what about these weapons you have with you? He said, I have to travel a long way and I have a lot of enemies in the surrounding area. So do you expect, of, expect us to walk into a trap and be slaughtered? We have to keep our self-defense. You can see the weapons are all hidden. So he went back to Quraysh and said, he's coming for Umrah. The weapons are hidden. He has, they're all in Ihram, they're here for Umrah. Let him go in for Umrah. He said, we need to be a little bit more you know, sure about it. We have to check up more. So they sent another person and they said, let, tell us what you think of it. And his name was Mukriz ibn Hafs. So he went, just walked around, looked about, and walked, came back. He didn't talk to anyone. They said, what do you think? He said, I don't know. They might be for Umrah, they're in, you know, as they are in Ihram. They might be for war because they have their weapons. So someone who has no clue, he didn't talk, he didn't ask anybody, but subhanAllah, just out of the blue decided that this is his way. So he said, Wallahi, you don't know anything. What after that, they decided to send a third person, and that person was the leader of Al Ahabish, Al Hulais ibn Al Qama. Al Ahabish, who said it's a, a tribe which has settled in Arabia, but originally from Abyssinia Al Habasha. And they used to be a strong, powerful tribe. So they sent him to, to them and said, Okay, you. Tell us what you think. So, so far, Quraysh is sitting back. They're not doing anything. Getting everybody else to try and investigate for them. So, Hulais went there. And as soon as he walked past, the Prophet Sallallahu saw him coming. He said, this is a man who has high respect for Al-Hadi. The cattle to be slaughtered for Allah. Get the Hadi walking past. So, the Sahaba got the Hadi and got them walking all around. So, he saw that. He didn't have to say anything. He turned back. And he went to Quraysh. He said, O oh, people of Quraysh, he came for Umrah. I saw the Hadi. No one takes Hadi when they come for a war. And Wallahi, if you don't allow him to enter Mecca for Umrah, we will spread the word amongst all Arabia that Quraysh are being oppressors. So someone from Quraysh swore at him, he said, you don't know, you, you have no clue. So he said, Wallahi, if you don't retreat of what you said, I will call Al-Ahabish and fight you in Mecca. He said, oh, calm down, you know, when that's not what we're here for. Suddenly they were backed on another person who might fight them out of their, someone's rudeness. So they just, after all this, found another person and that was Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi. You know, Bani Thaqif in Ta'if, another big tribe. And to know Urwa ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi, he's one of two men who are extremely learned in that in the Arabian Peninsula, to the level of Allah in the Quran. Whenever you read, Lawla unzil hadha al-Quran ala rajulin min al-qariyatayni azim. It's Al-Walid ibn Mughira in Mecca and Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi in Ta'if. So this was his level of people respect to him as learned, knowledgeable in Arabic and respectful, honorable person. So he said, why don't you go and see what Muhammad is up to? So Allah said, okay, I will go on one, one, per, one condition. He said, go on. He said, whatever I say, you do. You won't treat me like the others. You just said, yes, you don't know. No, we need another one. We need another opinion. Whatever I say, you follow. 
So they gave a, an oath that, yes, whatever you decide, we will fulfill. So our Yusuf Thaqafi walked in, and as he was walking, coming past the Prophet Sallallahu he said, this is a man who backstabs people. So be, be ready. And he ordered uh, his special guard. He had a special person who was a guard. And it was uh, Al-Mughira ibn Shu'ba. He asked him, he said, he's on Ihram. He said, put on your war cover, the metal cover, and stand behind me. So Al-Mughira ibn Shu'ba stood up behind him. And Al-Mughira is the nephew of Urwa ibn Yusuf Thaqafi. So Urwa is his uncle. So imagine the protector of the Prophet Sallallahu is the nephew of the person who might be to hurt them. Stood there, of course he didn't know who he is, just a guard. So Allah decided, I have to try and irritate Muhammad and the Muslims. If they are patient, it means they're coming for Umrah. If they reply rudeness by being rough, it means they're coming for blood and a fight. That was his thought of, about the way. So he sat to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Oh Muhammad, have you come to fight? Straight away. Nothing, you know, why are you here? Are you here to fight? The Prophet ﷺ said, no, we came for Umrah. We are all in Ihram. He said, well, what about all these weapons? He said, we're just expecting anybody to attack. On the way, we have to defend ourselves. And anybody who walks out has his personal weapons on him, not extravagant weaponry. And then he started swearing and cursing. Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, he is the man who is the most patient amongst the Sahaba. Imagine the patient person started swearing back at Urwa. The Prophet sallallahu said, leave him. So Urwa looked at him and said, Wallahi Abu Bakr, if it wasn't for a favor I owe you from long days, because Abu Bakr was a tradesman, so there was some work amongst them. So if it wasn't for favors, I would have replied to you, but I'll leave it here. But Urwa as well was not happy, so he decided to intimidate more. And he pulled his hand to try and grab the Prophet's beard, which is a very disparate move to anybody, let alone to the Prophet As he was getting his hand, the shield of a sword hit him. al mughira ibn Shu'ab hit him and he said, take your hand back before your arm returns without it. I will chop it off for you. This is the Prophet of, Rasul, of, of Allah. Abu ibn Saud said, who is that rough, rude person hitting me on my hand? The Prophet said, have you not known him? Have you not known who he is? He said, no. He said, this is your nephew, Al-Mughira. Arab ibn Saud was shocked. He said, you're hitting the hand that has saved you from death. There's a story to this again. So I'm going to cut in between so you can understand why. Al-Mughira ibn Shu'ba, in the past, before becoming Muslim, he went out with a group from Bani Malik, the Arabs, to Egypt, to the leader of Egypt, Al-Muqawqis. And being, as he said, his uncle described, rough and rude, and he's always been rough, as from childhood apparently, with his family, he went there and he was again rough meeting a king. So the king didn't like him. So on their way back from Egypt, he gave every person from Bani Malik, 13 men, presents but not to Al-Mughira. So he was so upset that he left them at night when they were on their way back and he killed all 13 men, took the presents and returned back to his tribe. Then Malik got all the army, went to a Ta'if, wanted to fight, they lined up, about to fight, and then a man, an elder man said, what are you fighting about? You want to kill each other for this? So he went to Urwa ibn Mas'ud said, why don't you pay the dia for 13 men and return the presents that were supposed to be theirs? And then that's it, end of story. He said, fine, I will pay it. So his uncle 
gathered all the money to save him from death of kill, after killing 13 men. But al mughira didn't like that. He took all the presents and ran away to Medina to the Prophet وسلم, and announced his Islam. I'm a Muslim now under the protection of Muslims. The Prophet وسلم, as for Islam, yes, we will accept it. But as for the presents that you stole, you must return them. Muslims have to fulfill their duties properly. So al mughira now becoming Muslim, subhanAllah, his heart becomes softer with Islam. He returned them happily. He returned all these presents back to his uncle to give them to Banu Malik. But his uncle paid him the diya for killing 13 people. And this is now his returning. This saying, this is the, you're hitting the hand that paid or saved you from death. Replying unto that story. But of course, Al-Mughira didn't listen because this is a prophet of, of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, this is Rasulullah. Now, the Bilal, while they were sitting, Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu an called for Adhan, the Salah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got up to make wudu, and Urwa ibn Mas'ud was looking. He was gobsmacked in our wording. He saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam making wudu, no drop of water falling on the floor. All the Sahaba jumping and collecting any drop and wiping themselves on any little wipe, nothing. Aurob ibn Saud could not believe this and he walked back. He said, I've, so, I've seen enough. When he arrived and reached Quraysh, they said, what do you see? He said, Wallahi, you know me. I have been to Kisra in Persia, as in his kingdom. And I have been to Caesar, the Roman, in his kingdom. And I've been to al Najashi in his kingdom, that's in Abyssinia. And wallahi, I have never seen anybody as strong and loved by his people as Muhammad is in his kingdom. That's what he, he described it. Wallahi, if you fight them, they will not let you take him without killing equivalent to their number, minimum. And there are 1,400, so imagine if they are to, it will be a massacre. He said, so what is your opinion now, Urwa? He said, I think the best way is to sign a peace treaty with him. Sign a truth and let him to come to Mecca. He said, wallahi, they will not enter without our permission. He said, it's up to you, but this is my advice. Quraysh understood, okay, there is no way. So they started thinking about, yes, why not? We can have a, a peace treaty with him. It will help us as well. But before we try that, let's try and see if we can capture one of their men and see what they will do. So they sent 40 men at night to try and capture a Muslim and come back with it. See if they can you know, irritate the Muslims, see if they want to fight. And subhanAllah, as they were entering, the Muslims surrounded them and 40 men coming to capture one became all captured. Quraysh heard 40 men of theirs captured and the Muslims got their weapons coming to fight. The Prophet ﷺ said, release them. We are not here for a fight. We are here for Umrah. Let us enter to the house of Allah. That was his request. So Quraysh understood now that definitely he's not coming for a fight. He's coming for Umrah. But again, they don't want to let him come because he hasn't sought permission to come in. So they decided to say, we have to think about it. Prophet Sallallahu seeing all this happening and delays and delays said, okay, let me approach them. So he called Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, said, Ya Umar, go to Abu Sufyan, talk to him, explain to him we are here for Umrah. See what he says. Umar said, Wallahi, Ya Rasulullah, you know how much I hate the mushrikeen and how rough I am on them. And secondly, I have no one of my family in there or my tribe to support me. Why don't you send someone who has a backup in Mecca? So he said, who do you suggest? He said, Uthman ibn Affan. He is from the same tribe as Abu Sufyan. He said, fine. The Rasul said, Uthman ibn Affan to 
negotiate a, a treaty let us just get in when Abu Sufyan saw Uthman one of his family relatives he said Ya Uthman if you want you can do tawaf he said wallahi I will not do tawaf before the Prophet does it himself then me he said okay if that that's coming let's let's talk what is it all that we just want for come for Umrah just all you have to do just let us do Umrah and go back that's all we want he said fine sit with me here and he did not allow him to leave Mecca stay over and I'll discuss it with the rest of Quraysh when Uthman was delayed the message came to the Prophet Sallallahu that Uthman was killed and when the messenger of any person get killed it's a major concern the Prophet Sallallahu called on one Sahaba and said now we have to do Al-Bay'ah and Al-Bay'ah is just to promise that if a fight happens no one of you will run away and this was called Bay'at al-Rudwan so all the Sahaba 1400 lined up and started coming to do the allegiance where the allegiance to the Prophet وسلم, that if any war happens they will not run away the first Sahabi radiallahu anhu to do it uh, was uh, Abu, Abu Sinan al-Asadi Abu Sinan al-Asadi came first put his hand and did allegiance of course the Sahaba came one after the other Salam ibn al-Akwa one of them did it and sat on the side and as everybody finished the Prophet وسلم, looked and saw Salama ibn al-Akwa sitting he said Ya Salama come give me the allegiance he said I did it Ya Rasulullah he said do it again it doesn't matter so if I, I mean if I forgot that's okay just do it again and the one who is the Munafiq, who is said Al Jid ibn Qais, he started hiding behind the camels while everybody is busy so the Prophet doesn't notice. And once they finished, the Prophet ﷺ took his left hand and put it on top of his right hand and said, And this is for Uthman ibn Affan. So the Sahaba said, Wallahi, the left hand of the Prophet replacing Uthman is better than all our right hands. To, to mean that Uthman has done the allegiance as well. Once they sat down, the Prophet ﷺ said, everybody who has swore the allegiance today will enter Jannah. SubhanAllah, 1400. Except the owner of the red camel. He didn't name him, but he named, we know who it is now. That's because he's munafiq and he hasn't done his allegiance. Now the Prophet وسلم, sat and got ready in case they wanted to fight. And this is where we see in, in the Quran in Surah Al Fatih, Allah revealed, which is chapter 48, verses 10, and said, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Inna al Ladina yubayyuna ka inna ma yubayyuna Allah. Those who ply and give you the allegiance are doing this to Allah not to you it's directly to Allah Yadullahi fawqa aydihim the hand of Allah is on top of their hands i.e. to approve what they have done فَمَنْ نَكَثَ فَقَدْ نَكَثَ فَإِنَّمَا يَنْكُثُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ so whoever does harm and retreats he's doing harm only to himself وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِمَا عَاهَدَ عَلَيْهُ اللَّهِ فَسَيُؤْتِيهِ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا and whoever fulfills what he has promised Allah, Allah will give him a great reward. And again, in the same surah, uh, chapter 48, verse 18, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah has been happy and given his, uh, the pleasure, good pleasure, on the mu'mins. إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ As they gave their swore their allegiance under the tree, فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ He knew what's in their hearts. And that's it, the truth in their hearts. فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا As he sent his tranquility upon them. And then he rewarded them with a speedy victory. And the whole, the allegiance swear did happen under a tree. And this tree remained under the days of the Prophet and Abu Bakr 
in the days of Umar radiallahu anhu, as he always did, anything that could affect the Iman of the Muslims, he would get rid of. So he cut the tree down. So people don't come and visit and think that, oh, this is the tree that the Prophet did the bay'ah, or the tree, and subhanAllah, shaitan plays with humans' minds, and then suddenly they were worshipping a tree. So he took it down. Radiallahu When this all happened, suddenly the Quraysh decided, okay, we have to sign a treaty. So they sent a man of negotiation. As we hear now, lots of negotiations going around the world. There special people who are specified and specialists in that. Suhail ibn Amr. And as he was walking, the Prophet وسلم, saw him. He said, Suhail ibn Amr, sahal Allah lakum. Allah will make it easy for you. This is a man of peace. As he walked in, he sat with the Prophet وسلم, and discussed the peace treaty that he discussed before with Quraysh. And they talk, spoke about all the points they wanted, and then they agreed the points, and they started about to write now documentation. First of all, Prophet ﷺ was dictating, and Ali ibn Abi Talib writing. He said, okay, Ali, write now. This is what we have agreed between, Ali writing, Muhammad Rasulullah and Suhail ibn Amr. And so he said, stop, stop, stop. He said, if I believe that you are Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah, I wouldn't have been fighting you or writing this treaty. You write your name and the name of your father, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. So he said, okay, write it. Ali said, Ya Rasulullah, I already wrote, written Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, well, wipe it out. He said, I wouldn't wipe out your, your name. The Prophet said, where is it? SubhanAllah, he didn't know how to read. He said, there it is. The Prophet ﷺ wiped it himself. So, Muhammad ibn Abdullah and Suhail ibn Amr. I'm sorry, before that he said, Right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So he wrote, he said, Hang on, I don't know who Rahman is. What is a Rahman? Say, Bismillahum. Same thing. Before Muhammad ﷺ said, Wipe it down. He said, I don't know, I wouldn't wipe ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ali. So the Prophet said, Where is it, Ya Ali? Ali showed him, so he wrote it. Then they wrote, this is what the treaty signed between Muhammad and Abdullah, the change with Muhammad and Suhail ibn Amr. As they were about to start the writing further, a little event happened while they were just about to write the treaty. Now the point of, the bullet points of that treaty were that Muslims do not enter Mecca this year. They return back and they come the following year to do Umrah. And that was a little bit harsh on the Muslims. They've already done all the hardship and they're here. They can't, just can't enter that extra meter to get into the Haram. So it was hard on them. That was agreed by the Prophet Second, if they come the following year, they will only stay in Mecca for three days. No more. No weapons to be brought with them the following year, except a weapon for a personal weapon and to be hidden, not out, shown outside, and the weapons will stay outside the haram when they come back for Umrah. They don't enter haram with their weapons. Then the truth will be between the Muslims and Quraysh for 10 years. Anyone who comes from Mecca as migrating Muslim will be returned to Quraysh. And anyone who comes from Muslims to Quraysh, reverting from his religion, he will stay with them. They will not return him to the Muslims. So again, not, e not equal balance. Again, the Prophet ﷺ agreed, and that was again hard on the Muslims. You know, how come, why is it not equal deal? Any tribe who would like to join this treaty can join either the part of the Muslims or the part of Quraysh. And amongst people present on the day were Bani Bakr and Khuza'a. And they, were, they had enmity amongst them. So Bani Bakr joined the true the camp of Quraysh and Khuza'a joined the camp of the Muslims. And part of the deal that if any tribe attacks the other tribe, it's like Quraysh or the Muslims. So the treaty will be broken if any of the tribes, even not only the Muslims and Quraysh. 
And once they've decided on this, they said these are the points, as they were about to fin start writing, subhanAllah, a man comes running and shouting, shackled in metal. And that was a man called Abu Jandal, radiallahu anhu. Abu Jandal was the son of Suhail ibn Amr. Muslim, but shackled because he's Muslim, not so he doesn't run away. Heard the Muslims are just outside, came running, arrived, Ya Rasulullah, I'm here coming as a migrating Muslim to you. Please take me and save me. Suhail ibn Amr said, Ya Muhammad, the deal. We've already agreed a deal. Sahaba said, and Umar said, we haven't written anything yet. So Imam said, isn't the word enough? We have agreed it now, just a matter of writing. The Prophet ﷺ said, yes, the word is enough. You take your son. Abu Jandal said, Ya Rasulullah, what's going on? He didn't know about the treaty and the deal and the agreement. Ya Rasulullah, what, why are you sending me back to the kuffar? They will try and revert me, they will hurt me. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will find you a way, inshaAllah. And as they were pulling him out, Sahih ibn Amr was walking his son back himself. Umar was standing next to him with his sword. He said, Ya Abu Jandal, these mushriks are dirt. You can kill them. But Abu Jandal didn't want to kill his, dad, his father. So he just returned back. The Muslims could not tolerate this. It was really hard on them seeing someone coming migrating, shackled and still taken back. That was really hard on them on that day. So imagine what happened. All the treaty to them is a really black spot in their history, according to the Sahaba. But this is what Allah has decreed for them. And Allah has called it Al-Fatih, an, an opening, a conqueror. So once that happened, Suhail ibn Amr came back. They got the treaty, everything done, written, signed up. And that's agreed. The Prophet ﷺ looked at the Sahaba and said, Now you go, take your ihram off, shave your heads, and let's do the hadi. No one moved. The Prophet ﷺ was shocked. This is the first time ever that they disobey him. They disobey and what he asked them to do. So he went back to his tent, angry. His wife, Umm Salama radiallahu anha, she was with him and she saw him angry. He said, what's going on, Ya Rasulullah? He said, I have ordered the Muslims an order and they have not listened to me. And wallahi, I fear if I give them a second order and they don't do it, Allah will send them major calamity or destroy them. She said, what is it? He said, I ordered them just to take the ihram and shave. A wise woman, subhanAllah, radiallahu anhu, said, Ya Rasulullah, why don't you take your ihram, shave, once they see you doing it yourself, they will just follow. They know that this is what's happening. It's not just an order, You've, it's an action. And so we say, subhanAllah, if you want to advise anybody on, on anything good, you should be doing it yourself first. Because if you don't do it, what's the point? So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walked out, took his ihram in front of the Sahaba, called the, the, the barber, shaved his head. When they saw him shaving, they said, okay, that's it. And they started shaving to each other's cutting. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was shaving, he said loudly, Rahim Allahu al-Muhalliqeen. May Allah give glad tidings and rahmah to the ones who shave. So Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, wal muqassirin. What about one who just cut shorter? He said, wal muhalliqin. Second time. He said, Ya Rasulullah, what about al muqassirin? Just shorter. He said, wal muhalliqin. Third, shave. Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, wal muqassirin. The one who just want to cut it short. He said, wal muqassirin. So Subhanallah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was just very soft on us. Just for, because he knew that Humans are weak. The hair is a pride. Not easy to shave your head. And I, I, know, I know the feeling of, alhamdulillah, having shaved my head. It's, it's a good feeling once you've done it, by the way. 
May Allah give it to all of us that, that allows, bismillah, inshaAllah. And as they were shaving each other, of course, they were so angry, so upset, they were cutting each other's, even, you know, everybody's bleeding, shaving, angry, and not doing the problem. What happened? And Sulh al Hudaybiyah, that's what we call it because it was the area of Al Hudaybiyah, or the Sulh was Sulh al Hudaybiyah. It was called, I'm saying by Allah, Al Fatih, conquer. And the whole surah of chapter 48 is in relation to this. But it's all what happened after it as well. I'm not going to go through Surah Al Fatih yet because what will happen after that is very important. And all the aftermath of wars, conquer, settlement, the number of Muslims that become Muslim after that. Now, from the day of the beginning of Islam, when the Prophet ﷺ said, I am a messenger of Allah, and the first believer, Khadija, radiallahu anha, to the day of Sulh al Hudaybiyah, this treaty, 19 years, the ones who came with the Prophet ﷺ to Umrah were. 1400. Two years from then, when we come to Fatah Mecca, the conqueror of Mecca, he had 10,000 Muslims with him. So 19 years, because they were so busy with all these fights and fights and defending and attacking and defending, only smaller and smaller amount. When there was peace, the message could be spread easier. By the time they got to Fatah Mecca, 10,000 men. And when we come to the Hajjat al Wada, the last Hajj with the Prophet, 120,000. So, subhanAllah, how it spread when there was peace. Now, of course, um, once this happened, they signed the treaty, Quraysh released Uthman, عن, and they knew that. Okay, there's nothing that happened. Osman is safe, alhamdulillah. They returned to Medina. Sahaba also upset and grumpy and gloomy about this black spot in our days, our history. What has the Prophet done? Umar on the way asking the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, are we not the Muslims? He said, yes. He said, are we not on the true path? He said, yes. He said, are you not the Prophet of Allah? He said, yes. He said, why do you give them that low quality type of attitude and agree to that treaty? He said, Ya Umar, I am Rasulullah. I am taking my orders from Allah. Umar accepted that, he says, Rasulullah. So he went straight to Umar, Abu Bakr, Ya Abu Bakr, are we not the Muslims? He said, yes. Are we not on the true path? He said, yes. He said, are we not the ones who are faithful? Yes. He said, how do we agree with this treaty that's demeaning us? He said, Ya Umar, he taught him a real lesson then. He is Rasulullah. Just follow his footsteps. And this is a lesson again to us when we know that someone is knowledgeable. We don't just start arguing why and how and when. Just follow them. They know they are specialists in that angle. Is different, of course, than the Prophet, but the Prophet was from Allah, so follow the footstep. Now we are learning in all aspects of life. We follow the footstep of the specialists. Children, we always say, you know, don't do this, do that. They all say, why? 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 Okay, we can explain many times, but follow the footsteps of the parents because they've guided you the right path, inshallah. When the Sahaba arrived to Medina, after just a short period, another man came running to Medina, Abu Basir radiallahu anhu. He ran away from Mecca all the way to Medina, not knowing about the treaty even yet. As he arrived to Medina, Ya Rasulullah, I came migrating, I'm a Muslim, and did the Shahada. Minutes later, two people from Quraysh came to him, Ya Muhammad, the treaty we have, we need Abu Basir back. Abu Basir, Ya Rasulullah, I've traveled all that distance. He said, Ya Abu Basir, we have a treaty. May Allah find you a way out of it. So he, they took him and went back. On their way back, 
Al Basir managed to escape from them, pull the sword of one of them, kill the first one, and run after the other. The other ran away from him. The nearest place is Medina. So he entered, ran away to Medina, to the masjid, afraid. And the Prophet ﷺ saw him said, this man has seen death. He's so scared, he's seen death. And seconds later again, Abu Wasir following him with the sword. He said, Abu Wasir, don't kill him. He's in Medina now. So Abu Wasir left the one. So the man said, Muhammad, our treaty. He said, I have handed him back to you already. You didn't look after him. That's it. He is free. But, Ya Abu Basir, you do not stay in Medina. You go out. He said, why shall I go, Ya Rasulullah? He said, anywhere, but not in Medina. So Abu Basir decided to go to a nice place, which we mentioned before, which is al Ais which is the mountainous area northwest of Medina, where they camped once and attacked one of the caravans. We discussed that last, last week or the week before. And he sat, settled there and started sending a message, anybody who wants to come, Muslim, you Muslim, don't go to Medina now, there is a treaty, come to me. And suddenly they collected their 300 men and they started attacking all the caravans of Quraysh. And Quraysh sent troops to attack them. They're hidden, hiding in the caves. They can't do anything. Quraysh caravans all stopped. They had no one, nothing coming through to Mecca or going out of Mecca. Anything that comes, Abu Basir and his group will take it. So they went to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, sent delegation. Ya Muhammad, please take these men to you. That contract we had the deal about the Muslims is being returned. We don't want it. Take, take them, have them but please let our caravans pass. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was again his soft heart. He said, okay, yes, fine. So he called Abu Basir and his friends, come to Medina now, leave them alone. I will, I will leave it as this, inshallah, and uh, next week we'll carry on from, from that. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayka.